I am not hopeful about this, but hey ho. Something is burning though. Something is actually burning. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you, you, you right there. Yeah, and you on the bus next to him, having a little look over the shoulder on the phone. Hope you're well, uh, wherever you are in the world. Welcome uh, to our kitchen. Today is a little bit of an interesting one because we're cooking fish in a pan. I know that doesn't sound weird, but check this out. This is something called a taiyaki pan. Can you see that? Taiyaki pan. And it makes um, fish shaped pancakes, I believe. And you can also get them uh, in like electronic makers, a bit like the uh, waffle block maker we made the other day. Apparently you can get ones like that, uh, that you can do with electric. But this appears to be a pan. Now, th uh, this is a little bit unplanned. I don't know if I'm gonna do this right. This video it could go either way. It could be one of those ones that goes like for like really smoothly or it could go on for like a week into like some epic fish conquest. Um, we will see what happens. Let's find out a little bit about what this actually is first of all. So this was sent to me uh, um, a couple of days ago. Uh, basically it came to me via Amazon, except I didn't order it. So some of you guys asked me for my PO box address from time to time, I'll give it out and you guys will send me like a birthday card for example, or a care package or something crazy to eat. Um, but someone did something different this time and put it on my Amazon. They put my PO box address in and it arrived like this and I've got no record of finding who sent this. So thank you whoever did. A lot of you do ask my PO box address, so I guess I could email you all individually, but I'm just gonna say, Thanks for the fish. Oh wow, that's actually quite a small pan. No instructions on the box. Oh, that is amazing. It's very three dimensional. So that is the taiyaki mold. Oh, oh my gosh, that's stiff. Wow, it feels more like a toy. Should we find out what we jolly we're making? The only thing I've seen similar to this before, can you see that? It's like a fish shaped ice cream cone like that. It's just like on one of those like food trend websites. I think they're quite popular in like New York and London and stuff like that. But I think that this is actually a teyaki uh, cone. So I don't really, I mean, I've still got some homemade Ben and Jerry's left over. We could potentially make that too. Teyaki, which apparently is literally baked sea bream, is a Japanese fish shaped cake commonly sold as street food. It imitates the shape of Thai, which is a red sea bream. The most common filling is red bean paste but other common fillings can be custard, uh, chocolate, Nutella, cheese, or even sweet potato. Look at this folks, for a cool £399, you can actually buy an industrial teyaki machine. And look, you can flip it over like that. That is crazy. Right, let's do our best at making this. I have no idea what's gonna happen. I feel actually like this might be the most challenging thing because you have to flip the batter and all that stuff. Let's make the batter. The ingredients are actually quite minimal. For the batter, we've got some bicarbonate of soda, baking powder, whole milk, so full fat milk, it says to do that, uh, sugar. Uh, we've also got some oil for the pan and our filling, so Nutella uh, and some custard, which was really, really exciting. Now there is one thing that kind of jumped out. I was like, oh, I can get that from the shops. Apparently we have to use something called cake flour. Now I always thought cake flour in the UK, they've introduced something called sponge flour, but that's what we used in the scones recently and they actually have a raising agent in it. Whereas we've already got like the baking powder and the bicarbonate of soda doing that. Apparently cake flour is like a plain flour with a lower protein content that you can buy in some countries. Now I couldn't find it, again I'm sure I probably could get it online, but apparently if we replace a couple of tablespoons of the flour with corn flour and mix it together, that can actually make your own homemade version of cake flour. Does that make sense? It doesn't to me, but we're gonna do it anyway. So that is 450 grams of this super fine plain flour. But I'm gonna take two tablespoons of it out and add in two tablespoons of the corn flour, AKA cornstarch. So something that's normally used to help thicken sauces and things. So I really hope I'm not gonna ruin this. I've got to say, Mrs. B and the kids are out on a day out today at a castle. Uh, it's, that sounds very British saying that, doesn't it? But generally there are quite a lot of castles around near where we live and it's what British people do on a nice summer day. They go out and look at castles and have picnics and stuff. Well, this one has a death slide and lots of play area stuff like that, which I'm sure hundreds of years ago, all the knights and that were like fighting and then go, oh, she's gone the death slide. But the, uh, Mrs. B said, what are you making today? And she left, I'm like, oh, I'm cooking some fish. She has no idea what I'm doing. So hopefully if this works, they'll taste it at the end. <laughs> Whoops, you all right? Okay, I hate it when you do that. The sugar, baking powder, and some bicarbonate of soda. And then we will push through our homemade cake flour 
the sieve just to get it even finer than it is already. Side note actually, one of the nastiest cooking injuries I've ever got was from a sieve. It's not this one, we got rid of it in the end, but there was a little bit, obviously this is made of like metal wire. There was a random shard of wire sticking out from it. I nicked it on there and it was like, Nah! Something from Stranger Things, it was crazy. But I hope you'll agree, that is looking amazing. Like looking like a snow-capped mountain. I saw this, um, actually some of you guys I mentioned sometimes that I uh, like certain things, like I quite like Snoop Dogg and some of you guys were surprised by that. I'm also a massive boxing fan and also UFC. And there was this video recently of one of the heavyweight fighters uh, in UFC and they're like, I can't believe how he cracks his egg. And I was like, oh. And it was like, check out how he does it. And he was literally just using like a knife like that. And I'm like, well, I mean, there's loads of ways to crack. What, what, what's wrong with that? I don't know. Oh, and if you want my opinion on the whole YouTube boxing thing, I think it's blooming hilarious. It is slowly absorbing those dry ingredients. They're so smooth though. I'm loving this. This is really nice to do. All right, folks, so I've transferred it to a jug to make it easier to get it into the pan later. And I'm going to stick it here. Oh, look, some Toblerone there. And that is a cheeky little Toblerone cake back there in the background. Yeah, remember the Toblerone cookbook, which I, I actually signed. I just did a patron only video uh, where we did a recipe from there and it is Insane, I cannot stop eating. In fact, there's not much left. I filmed that yesterday, it's amazing. Other than that, I'm just gonna wash up, so uh, yeah, see you in a little bit. I did see a really cool tweet the other day and I'd be interested to know your opinion. It was like, what is the hardest thing to wash up? Mrs. B loves the dishwasher, but I like to wash up manually and someone put a sieve and I actually agreed with them. And despite putting flour and easy stuff in that there, sometimes some of the stuff goes through this and you're like, oh my gosh, why did I do that? If you can think of something worse, let me know. All right then folks, this nice cold jug that has been a solid hour in there. I have got my pan. So I'm giving it a brush with some vegetable oil. The only thing, unlike uh, the waffle block maker when it all spills out and it's kind of safe, it holds it together. This is gonna probably hit a flame if it goes wrong. And the fish shapes themselves are actually not that deep, are they? So we'll have to be careful here. Oh, you can see how much that's thickened up. Just do a little bit like this. We then take our Nutella, apparently like a tablespoon streak. Oh dear. Then we've got to try and encase this in. So I'm gonna try and pour the batter directly on top of that Nutella to encase it. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, I am not hopeful about this, but hey ho. Right, we'll push this down and clamp it. Well, for the first one, apparently we're supposed to rotate it straight away and cook like that. Ah! And I really have no idea what's going on in there. Oh my gosh. Well, I am cooking fish sort of, aren't I? Uh, and there is batter seeping out. The good thing is it is going around my hob so I can deal with that. It's not gonna, it's not gonna catch anything on fire. Yeah, that's getting pretty bad now, actually. <laughs> I've got to turn it over as well. I think I'll turn it over once this kind of like eases off. Um, I'm a bit worried. All right, I'm gonna just flip it. <laughs> I love that, look at that. Sticking out like that. Oh, amazing. Something is burning though. Something is actually burning. Yeah, look at it. Wow. Oh, oh my gosh, we've sort of done it and now I know why it was burning. That's because the Nutella was actually catching on fire. So I might have overfilled my fish. We can't deny that is, that is a fish. Uh, but if you look, it's kind of exploded there where it burnt like that. And I've got a feeling, I went by the instructions I was given. I think it's because the Nutella might have been heavy that it actually hit the bottom of the pan. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean up and we'll think we'll try and cook that initial base layer just for 30 seconds on its own. So it gives it a nice little platform for the Nutella to sit on. We'll do less batter and we'll make the Nutella more of like a thinner strip going through it. It's just really hard to work out exactly how much batter you need. I think the mess is inevitable, but I think we can control it and not set fire to the house. Going back to that conversation of what is the most trickiest thing to wash up, it probably doesn't qualify, but let me tell you, a burnt hob with uh, Japanese style fish dessert on is, is, is not great. Some, some strong words were said and Boston was covering his ears. That's what I'm gonna say. Just lightly fill it. I just wanna cook this to firm it up. It shouldn't take long. Starting to hear a little sizzle. Look, 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 that's firmed up, right. That's fine. We'll take that off. We've downgraded to teaspoons. 
more batter on top. Okay, again, I think I've overfilled that. And this is still cooking whilst it's sat there, oh no. <laughs> but so far, a lot less seepage. Oh, it's starting. Oh no, it's starting. Oh no, I can smell burning. Oh, I don't like this. Right, so effectively, this side here, there's no seepage at all apart from that one side. That side's been cooked. So, in theory, if we turn that over, this is the cooked side, we should be able to have a good look at it. I'd... Oh! Oh my gosh! I make fish! <laughs> yes, look at those! <gasps> oh my gosh, look! I don't know how we did it. I don't know how, I know how we did it, but I don't know how we did it. Do you know what I mean? Yes! Ah, oh, I think that's worked an absolute charm. Look at that. Ah! We'll try some custard. For this recipe and that pan, the trivet has worked an absolute charm. I highly recommend using it. Because everyone's got a fish pan, right? The custard is a little lighter. In fact, so much so I can't even see it that well. Uh, this one's gonna be messy, I can tell. Oh, oh my gosh, it's coming that side. Let's see if it falls out still. Come on, don't break on me. It's worked, it's held it all in together. Nice and puffy as well, loving that. And to be fair, with the pan being a little bit on the small side, it is quite hard to judge how much to fill it with all the baking powder and soda in there. Um, but yeah, we should be able to just snap these bits off and we'll have another batch of fish. Oh, I also bought some Biscoff spread, let's try that. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh. Oh, I think we've nailed this. I think, I actually haven't had a chance to, we're gonna taste it. You gotta admit, they do look blooming awesome, don't they? I've made an edible aquarium. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, it's warm and fluffy inside and actually, something I haven't talked about, it is actually cooked through, which, um, you know, don't do the heat too hot on there if you are. If you, I talk like this as if you're all gonna get one of these, maybe you will. Look at that. Mmm. Oh, that is amazing. What a fun thing. Well, I don't think I'm gonna be opening a street food stall in Japan anytime soon, but I'm blooming proud of that. It started very badly and we've improved and hopefully that just demonstrates how blooming stonking they are. So thanks for watching folks. Uh, thank you particularly to the person that sent me that pan. Do get in touch via my contact form if you want my PO box address. Just don't send me random things on Amazon. Like loads of dog toys for Boston or like a washing line or something. Um, but honestly, that was a really surprisingly fun video. So I'll sign that and give it away to some Patreon folk on the next uh, giveaway. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. If you are, make sure your notifications are turned on to be told about all new uploads. Any video ideas, do let me know down below. And I'll see you again next time. Ah, ooh, yeah, I'll see you again next time. But bonus scene, should we just do a plain one and try and make an ice cream cone? Yeah. So we haven't got to add any filling to it, so we'll just make sure we cover all the areas, even the tail. All right, cook that over a low flame. I didn't actually say what they tasted like, did I? They were nice and light, airy, sugary, and that burst of Nutella was, oh my gosh. I bet freshly made on a street food, like with a massive mold, a huge shark mold would be absolutely stonking. They are really puffy, those ones. Yes, yeah, so they're a bit hot, but if we just slice its head off, which is obviously a very nice thing to do, and open this up. I think they must use other ones on the street stalls, but we've got a pocket there. It's such a small fish that I'm having to put in, like rather than like scoops of ice cream, little spoonful chunks from the bottom of the top. <gasps> but we've done it, look at that. Street food in your house. And that's the homemade Ben and Jerry's we made as well, and it's still warm as well, and it's melting it. So let's have a go. Mm. Yeah, that is amazing, the enhanced vanilla-ness. Uh, from our homemade ice cream is really adding to that. But the fish, like I say, they're sweet, they're light, they're airy, proper stonking. I hope one day I can get out to Japan and try these, but I really hope you do too. This is a mint flavored one with a Nutella filling. And I think the green food dye has actually made that look even more realistic. Amazing.